I am your host, Tina Thrussell, light dancer, co-founder of Best You Can Be and messenger of the Shin Dao, the way of the heart. It is my great pleasure to invite my guest, Lori Seymour, onto the show today. Lori is um, multifaceted. She is the uh, host of the radio podcast, The Wisdom Talk Radio. She is an executive coach and trainer. She's the founder of The Baca Journey. She's a best-selling author. And I was introduced to Lori by email uh, from a mutual friend. And from there, I went and listened to a radio podcast with another of our EBC friends, Carrie. And I knew in listening to Lori that I needed to have her on the show. She is definitely a woman who lives from her heart and lives with purpose and passion. And just before I bring her on to introduce her to you, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that you can receive a complimentary subscription to Heart and Mind Matters, an inspirational uplift, YouTube video, quote of the week that comes to your inbox every other Tuesday. You can subscribe at B-E-S-T, the letter U, C-A-N, the letter B, dot C-A. And if you'd like to know more about the philosophy of the way of the heart, go to shindao.com. And now, the moment you have been waiting for, I introduce you to Lori Seymour. Welcome to the show, Lori. I'm so pleased to be here with you, Tina. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for agreeing. I know that we have busy, busy lives, and uh, it it's always interesting to to make space in our day, in our schedule. And I appreciate the fact that you've done that. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm I couldn't imagine a better place to be in this moment. Oh, thank you. That's great. So, uh, unconditional love. I when I when I was listening to the to the podcast with Carrie, um, you talked about how it was unconditional love that brought you to the place that you are at now. I mean, so many of us start off feeling a little bit lost and not sure about who we are and what we're doing. I mean, we're doing work. We might feel on purpose, and maybe that was even your case. But I I remember you saying, but it felt like something was missing. And, and that I always find that something missing is something from our heart. Eh? <laughs> I, I think that must be why you do the work you do. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, yeah. and that's true. That's true. I, I, I think I came into this world in a, in a, with a question and in a questing place and in a, a way of, I want to know about life. I want to understand life. And I, I came in to a family that that wasn't, those questions were not up. Life was a struggle. There was a lot of um, tricky situations that were being dealt with. My, my father died when I was very, very young. And in a way, he carried for me that feeling of unconditional love. I think mm -hmm. I felt it from him first. Yeah. And when he, he died, it was like the lights went out. Oh. And my mother just had to struggle so much. And that's what she knew. And so that's what I adopted. And I adopted that way of I need to look out for what's going on and how to take care of myself and how to take care of my mother and my three brothers. And and I was not even seven years old. Oh, wow. So, you know, so that, that seeded a lot of things. And it was the kind of the dual place of, okay, I, their love, what it was love, I guess it didn't really exist. Mm. And, and with that, at the same time was this, I know there's more, I know there's something that's that people know about, and that I need to know about, you know, that that I need to, or I want to know about. And they've all got the secret, but I need to do something so that I can get to that secret. And so the first thing I did was to start to study psychology. And that felt very on purpose and on purpose on multiple levels, being of service and also questing, you know, with that question that I came in with is what, 
what's life about? What do I need to, how can I understand it? How can I best be in it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are the possibilities? Because I always had that feeling that like there was more. I'm sure many of our viewers can relate to that feeling that there, there must be more, there must be more. And that questing and searching for what is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so in that questing and searching, mm -hmm. you landed in psychology, which gives you lots of brain food for <laughs> sure. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Not a lot from the heart. Hence the whole, I'm sure. Right. When yeah. we spend when we spend our lives in that place of being in our heads, there is this sense of disconnect from mm -hmm. our true mm -hmm. essence, from who we really are, from the love that is inside of us. So how did you end up coming to that place of rediscovering that love? Oof. Well, it, it's it's a long story that I won't make too long. <laughs> um, I was a psychotherapist and I had been already experimenting with all sorts of different ways of working with people and ways of discovering more of myself. And I never went the traditional route anyway. I went more in the, actually I went to graduate school in Canada, oh. uh, in Vancouver. And I was always in that mode of, you know, okay, what's possible? And, and so the emotional realm um, was something that I got to explore for a long time. And so it wasn't just the, the intellectual, it was the emotional as well. Okay. And in that, um, there was I knew there was still more. Mm. And I, I started having spiritual experiences that I couldn't quite understand that um, I started working with with music and imagery that took me into another whole and another whole journey. I was working with energy. I was trained in working with energy. But it was not until I met a certain person uh, by the name of Dawn who I first had that experience. And it was in energy of unconditional love. Like it was that remembrance that was brought forward so strongly, mm. so profoundly. And, and it, it, it pushed aside any doubt because I was so big with self-doubt. Um, and with doubting the, the truth of love, that's really what the doubt was. Mm. Um, and so I landed in that place of this is real. I had such an experience that I couldn't deny it, no matter how much my head might have tried to do that. Huh. And so what became so important was to be able to stay connected with that place, with that feeling of unconditional love and that place that that, that I call the inner compass, which is that place of that place of inner guidance. Mm -hmm. And that that guidance then when when the guidance is there and, it, and you feel the love, you know, it's true. Yes. When you're getting guidance that where you don't where you feel judged or where you feel, you know, really off kilter. That's probably personality. I mean, that's part of the discernment that that. Um, I, I find this so important when I'm working with people to teach them how about how to find feel that in their own body. Alignment, right? There's that, yeah, that sense mm -hmm. of the head and the heart match, the feelings match what yeah. 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 That's it's it it's if we just go with emotion, emotion can be the kind of uh, this is this is controversial. I'll just say start with that. Okay. Kind of like the negative side of truth, because it can we can get caught up in the drama of emotion, and that doesn't mean that we we override emotion or we prime press it down or ignore it. At, it we start there, and we start with how does that feel in the body, and then we've got to find a way to come to balance. That's at least for me. That's what I've discovered, it, so that I can see what do I really need to do in this situation? What's the truth of it? What, what is that, that, what am I hearing that I need to follow? Rather than, oh yeah, sure, sure. Spirit says I can have a hot fudge Sunday right now. Uh, or I can run off with this man. Well, <laughs> you know, our personality will have a little chuckle or our higher self will have a little chuckle and our personality will go, ooh, whoopee. 
<laughs> so, so, so what you're telling us is that that's how you tell the difference between what's um, authentically real, a true connection with source is, mm -hmm. is that alignment of that we think it and it feels right in our heart. And it's not just a, oh, woo, I get to go play, but mm -hmm. there is this, it, would you describe it as just sort of an inner knowing or? It's an inner knowing. And then as you, as you work with it, it gets even stronger than an inner knowing because there is a vibration in the body that you really can come to where you start to be able to discern, oh, I don't turn left, I turn right. And it, but it, inner knowing is a great way to speak about it. Absolutely. Because it feels, you feel solid in it. Mm. And it could be something that says, it could be something that takes you into such a different direction than you've been going in and something that takes you in a way that says, oh, well, like for me right now, I'm changing the name of my website. Um, I am working in some different ways that I haven't worked before. And yet that's been my guidance, but it's, it's definitely takes me to the edge, you know, the edge of my own comfort. Cool. That, that place of being stretched a little bit is exciting. It is. It's scary. Um, it's exciting. And, you know, scaring and, and excited is just the same thing, really. If we just feel it in our body, it's like, oh, if I were to describe excited, it's, it's very similar to how I might describe fear. It's like, ooh, I get more alert and aware. I might, my breathing might get more rapid. We have a friend who used to say the only difference between feeling afraid and feeling excited is breathing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I must have had the same friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's when we're afraid we do that. You know, there's that kind of tighten up and, and we, we stop breathing deeply. But if we breathe deeply into it, that, that, that kind of tenseness yeah. gives way to that excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's sometimes just our thoughts that, that create the difference one way or the other. You know, the thoughts that say, this is a scary situation. And mm -hmm. if we go into it and we stay with it and we stay with our heart, we stay with our body, that can shift. We can start to see, oh, this is a new situation. It's not the old one. It's not that repeating thing that I've been so afraid of. Because if I look at it, this feels different. This has an, a quality of newness. And wow, we get to experience something um, of our own potential. Mm. Mm, I like that. So would you say that defines the work that you're doing now? Tell us, uh, do you help people come to that place of learning to listen so that they can feel that heart, they can experience that alignment? That is what I do. I mean, that's, it's really what I've been doing for a very long time. Um, probably, you know, 20 plus years, uh, probably 30 years. But about 20 years ago, I was gifted in this experience with, of working with energy over uh, many, many years with the, the stewardship of a special, really esoteric technology that now what I'm seeing as I look back over the people that I've been working with for all these years, and I'm seeing where does, who have I been working with? How has this been transforming people? And, and then how am I, what's my next step with it? And what I've been seeing is the value with professional innovators, with um, company founders, with visionaries, with uh, product designers, people that are that are getting ideas, mm -hmm. but that don't, you know, it's like ideas filter in, you may, I have a great idea, but then how do they know, is this for me? That's one. Mm -hmm. And, and then what are the next steps? What are the next steps so that I can really optimize this connection with my own creative intelligence, and, and get to market more quickly, and, and feel more confident in the whole process. So that is the work that I've been doing now. And the, um, the 
system that ha I've created pooling all of what I've been doing over these years is called the potentiation process. And it's looking at the physics of innate intelligence, the science of that, the science of gut instinct, and then pooling it into how do we learn how to navigate? How do, how do we learn how to navigate uh, internally? And taking that inner navigation, that inner compass to show us how we need to move step by step in the world. Mm, sounds like a brilliant alignment. And when people get to that place, great thing has got to happen. <laughs> exactly. And, oh, I, I get so excited when um, a client who has really had what they described as writer's block for a long time, and they've been a writer, but they're just, they know something big is coming. And then to start to see how that layers and layers just drop away so easily. And they're writing. And the person I'm thinking about, I mean, has an amazing story because she's now created such an incredible teaching in the world. And she, and I'm not, I'm not going to share her name right now, but it, it was to see how she went from this little picture to this huge, really empire and enterprise, but empire is not the right word because it's, she has created such a, a beautiful message for the world and teaching for the mm -hmm. world. Ooh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> it, it is. And, and I just, I just, I get to be the witness of that uh, in, in working with the people that I'm working with. I feel so blessed to be able to uh, have someone enter the door saying, I don't know what to do. I've got all these ideas, but nothing's working. I feel like I'm missing my timing. Um, and then to help them connect with their own inner guidance. It's mm -hmm. not about me telling them what to do. It's about me teaching them and with energy, having them experience what it is like to feel their own inner guidance and to trust that. Nice. Yeah. So do you feel that your own experience with Dawn that 20 years ago? That was, that was 30 some years ago already. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> did that, did that launch you into being able to do that for others? I mean, once you were able to experience that more fully for yourself, did that shift your direction? Is that what took oh, it you from? Oh, totally did. Yeah. yeah, it totally shifted my direction because I was actually part of the training staff of uh, a beautiful method called Guided Imagery and Music, the Bonnie Method of Guided Imagery and Music. And that had taken me and opened me up in all sorts of ways. And that experience, though, with Dawn started me, it was like, okay, I am in the midst of a quantum leap and I am being propelled in such a way you know, I didn't know what was what, but a group of us came together to study with Dawn and and were and would meet regularly. And we were our own uh, inner research team, so to speak. And there were about there were a group of about 50 of us that came from different parts of the world and that came together to continue this research on how do we experience the energy coming in? How do we experience this vibration of unconditional love? And how do we need to, how can we sustain that in our everyday life? Mm. And artists and teachers and consultants and coaches and government executives, uh, Canadian executive people, just because you're in Canada, um, uh, business people, yeah, scientists, you know, people from every walk of life who came to who would come together regularly. And so when I started the Baca journey, it was really in honor of all of that work that we did. Mm -hmm. And it was bringing it out into a way that could be accessible for others. It, what you're what you're describing really resonates for me because it involves music and energy and um, you know one of our fellow EBC friends Sharon Karn is very very involved in the power of sound and music mm -hmm. and uh, I is that something that you're incorporating into the Baca journey it's not um, I love it and I love the work that I did and it's just it's there in my cells. 
Uh, and probably the, all that I learned from that in terms of, um, of working in other dimensions and of working with people while they were in altered states certainly comes into play. When, when people are, when I have someone on my table, for example, and I'm doing, um, I, I'm working with them with, with the energy work that I do, which is called Tereya Touch, um, you know, I can feel how that informs sometimes what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. So it's the basis for you. And that, and that's good to know. I, that's, that's a, a, a great thought for our viewers that something that we experience mm -hmm. that becomes the big life transformation for us isn't necessarily something that we're intended to bring forward into the world. Just because it was good for me doesn't mean I need to teach it. Right. And I experience so many people who step into uh, the healing world, the world of complementary um, medicine, complementary uh, holistic practices, and they feel called to share it because this was so amazing for me. Now I want to do it for you. I and mean, they come to the, all these roadblocks. And I, is, it, is it because they're excited and they want to share what happened for them? But it's not about just, it's about finding the right thing for you just accept that that was a tool to get you where you are exactly and and i was a trainer for it and it was and it i loved doing that and that moved me it gave me a lot of skills as a trainer that i probably didn't have before and um and so i i, I will i always value that uh and and i see that people come to me for example to um do the tray a touch training but I often feel like it's as much for them in their own evolution, their own connection with their creative intelligence, with that higher intelligence, than it is, I need to go out and be a healer. I need to go out. And I don't even speak about it as healing because I really, what I see with the Tereya touch is that people connect with that vibration of unconditional love. And of course, that's what, what changes everything. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. <sighs> unconditional love is there is there anything i don't know is there anything more important than that in terms of bringing us to truly living from our heart mm. Mm. i mean that is that is living from our heart yeah that is living from our heart it's easy to say and it's easy to have a concept about and what I and I and I had lots of concepts about what that meant, and it wasn't like I was just focused on you know intellectual processes. It was very much something that okay, I, I got the idea, but for so long I had still felt that hole, that place of I get it, but I don't feel it, mm -hmm. and. And it was the feeling of it where it really is. It literally was for me at least a vibration a vibration of frequency where I saw so much light and felt my, my cells undergoing a transformation. And so that's what happens right now with, the, with these initiations, with the really what I think of as, as um, an installation of an app <laughs> in, in today's lingo. Um, because I also came out of, I spent a few years as a solutions engineer Oh. In this whole journey, can you, I mean, they, they all thought like, where'd you come from? <laughs> but it helped me to understand the technology part of the world. And it helped me to understand how we signal a noise. And it helped me to understand more about uh, the way in which we are all connected, that the universe is so intimately all connected and that we are an expression of that. So then as we connect with that infinite intelligence, that's what we get to bring to the world in as our innovate, as our innovations. Ooh. Ooh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. I love the fact that you know you're saying that you've used the science to say that, that this is this is a fact. This exists. Right. The universe is all interconnected. We are all one. Yeah. Energy exists. It's not just a concept. Like in the 60s and 70s, you talked about this and you were somebody who was woo-woo out there. Right. And we've evolved to the point of understanding 
science has shown us that everything is energy vibration and frequency mm -hmm. and they're just different vibrational frequencies that cause things to appear differently mm -hmm. and when we feel that oneness with that that is what unconditional love is in yeah. my yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I, what I've found is that my experience of unconditional love has continued to change. It's like, as my frequency changes, I get a whole new experience of, of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like, and then the way I'm working with someone changes, um, what I'm receiving changes. And then the, and the opportunities that come to me are different. So, we're never done. We're never done until we're done. <laughs> we're never enlightened. You know, and that's really kind of what I mean. And I, what I mean by that is it's like, we're human. Yeah. We live in a human world and a human body. And that human body is changing so dramatically. The billions of cells that we have within us are changing every single day. And I don't, I think it's, our dear friend Jennifer Huff says, I think it's every seven years or something that we, you know, all of our cells are new. So I want to invite our listeners, our viewers right now to say, what's new in me today? What's new in me? What, what is new that's wanting expression today? Because there's always something new. And the willingness to receive it, that's a big one, the willingness. And then to take the action. So I got this great idea, but what are you going to do about it? Yeah. You know, and are you willing to, to, to have to grab hold of the courage it takes to take the next step to yeah. see what is the next step? Oh, I've got to call this person I haven't thought of in 10 years. Let me just do it. Let me do it. Why not? Let's experiment. Nice. I am dropping my eyes to my keyboard in this moment because I realize we're oh, almost close to our time. And I want to be sure that our viewers have the opportunity to get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. So for now, the website is thebakajourney.com. Mm -hmm. That will be changing in the new year, but with the wonders of technology and forwarding and all that stuff, it's okay. You can jot this down and you'll still be able to reach Laurie Seymour this way through the Baca And I just, can I say, do I have one minute to say why the Baca journey? Yeah, absolutely. You've got a few minutes. The Baco is an area in um, Southern Colorado where a group of us, and I wasn't even living in Colorado when this first started, but we're a group where this group that I mentioned earlier would gather regularly. And it's a, it's high desert, it's about 8,000 feet elevation. Um, it sits on um, a, the largest underground lake in Colorado, with has, which has a bed of crystals at the bottom of it. And this was where a lot of the energy work happened and, and the initial research. And because it is a journey, it is life's journey. And so that's where I wanted to um, name my website when it first came out in 2011, when I first launched it as The Baca Journey. Ooh, I got chills all over as you described this place. I thought, oh, I want to go there. Have you considered, have you considered taking people to that original? Yeah, we, did. we did. We did for a long time. Now that feels complete. I, okay. I, I also, after 13 years of marriage, conceived my daughter there and oh, I had wow. not been able to conceive. Wow. So it's, wow. it holds a big place in my heart. No kidding. Wow, what an incredible gift. The the opening of, of living life and living your work completely differently and bringing a new life as a child into the world from, wow, that was powerful. Yeah. Whew. Wow. Well, uh, we're, we're like... 30 seconds away from being at a full half hour already. Holy moly. Time so, is flown. <laughs> yeah. So you've you've offered our viewers, the listeners, the the reminder that we want to be in alignment in order for things to happen and to feel 
that love and to harmonize our head and our heart mm -hmm. and that living from the heart is that unconditional love and what can you offer them as a little takeaway at the end of this yeah i think what i what comes to me immediately is the power of the breath and mm -hmm. that feeling because the breath is what gives us life and and i think of it's like the breath of presence and as we breathe in, and I often think of it as I'm breathing into my heart center, the center of my chest, and I'm seeing that as light and I'm allowing myself to receive it, like to really have the appreciation for it, which is the receiving and the gratitude. And, and then allowing that breath to do what it's gonna do because it has the intelligence. So that's what I would leave our viewers with, our, our guests today is that feeling of just take a breath when you don't know what else to do take a breath and realize that the breath has the intelligence to know what to do oh that is so beautiful what a beautiful parting gift mm -hmm. for everyone who tunes in and listens to this mm -hmm. thank you lori thank and you. um so again, thebakajourney.com, if you love Lori's energy, if you love what she's saying, if you feel like there is some part of you that you get these ideas and yet you don't seem to know what to do with them, uh, reach out and find out whether or not you're, you're well matched to work together at the very least, right? Mm -hmm. And starting some in mid-January, mid we'll, you'll have a wonderful, what's my innovation style quiz? To take when you come onto my website oh nice oh okay we're looking forward to that mid-january okay. wow thank you again so much Lori, for your heart and your wisdom and for being here on the show with me today and i invite everyone to tune in next week I actually don't even have a guest lined up for next week. And I'm thinking this might be the time where I just spend some time talking about what is the Shindao? What is the way of the heart? Um, what are the four pillars and the 12 tenets that make up this beautiful philosophy for living that's so in alignment with every one of my guests? Mm -hmm. And I uh, so on, until next week, again, thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. and, thank you, uh, Tina. Ciao for now, everyone.